Okay, today we're going to take a look at TrueNAS scale and how we can do an SMB share for your network devices on your NAS. So let's sign into our TrueNAS scale. This is already set up, so let's get signed in. This interface should be pretty familiar. It looks very similar to the TrueNAS Core. The steps in here to set this up for your SMB share or your network share is going to be very similar in TrueNAS Core. So if you follow these steps, the user interface is a little bit different but the steps should essentially be the same. So the first thing we're gonna need to do to set up a NAS is configure our storage on our TrueNAS scale. You can see here, there is no storage setup. And if we select disks up here, we can see that we have some disks. The first one SDA is the operating system for TrueNAS. We're not gonna be able to use that to store any data. It's just the way TrueNAS runs. You need separate disks. So we have four eight gigabyte disks here and we will create a new pool. So we'll go back to storage and we will select create pool. So the pool we're gonna create is going to be called tank. We're gonna use all four disks. So we select the top one there and we select the arrow to move them over to the data VDEV. So once that's selected, we can choose here which type of VDEV we want to create. So it's automatically selected on RAID Z2. I'm not gonna go with a RAID Z2, we just need a RAID Z. The difference is, is in RAID Z2, there'll be two parity disks, and in RAID Z, there'll be one parity disk. So you essentially get a little bit more storage, but you still get at least one disk of safety where one disk could fail and your data would still be fine. I'm fine with this. This is just a virtual machine to demo this setup. So once we select that, we go ahead and select create. And that'll take a minute. So once your pool is created, you'll go back to the storage dashboard. We can see here we have our tank storage. It's a VDEV RAID 1Z, four wide, eight gigabytes. It's usage, it's health, and the disk health. So now that we have our storage tank pool, we want to create a data set on that pool. So we'll select data sets here on the left and we will select the option here to add a data set. So the name I'm gonna give this one is called share because this is going to be our share, our network share. For sync, I'm going to disable this. This will speed up the storage. This is just home storage. It's not a database or a website or anything significant, any applications connecting to it. So we don't really need sync. It will significantly improve the transfer speeds over the network to this share with sync disabled. The compression level we will leave as inherit. This is just going to inherit the compression that is on your pool. A time or access time is off. We don't really need it. We don't need to see when files were accessed. Now for encryption, if you want to have your data encrypted, so if this machine gets stolen or taken or whatever, you don't want them to be able to read the data off the disk without having it unlocked in TrueNAS, uh, you can go ahead and do encryption. It will slow down your transfer rates a little bit and will consume some CPU and memory on the TrueNAS. I'm going to select inherit, which is unencrypted. I'm not worried about this data going missing or someone seeing it. So the other options here, we're gonna leave those on inherit for case sensitivity. We're gonna leave this at the default. 
This is going to be a share between some Linux clients and some Windows clients and some Mac clients. So we might as well just leave it at sensitive. Then under share type, we're going to select SMB because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a Windows file share. We'll take a look at what we have under advanced options here. There's some interesting options like read only or execute. You can stop things from being executed from the storage and things like record size. For the most part, you can leave all of this at the default. Select save at the bottom. So we can see here that our share data set was created. And these are the permissions. We will come back to this in a minute. What we want to do now is we want to create a group or a user that's going to have access to this data set. So in other words, the files and the folders within this data set, you need to apply permissions for a group or a user. Right now, it's the built-in administrators group, the built-in users group, root and root for the owner and the, the group. So we don't necessarily want this built-in administrators group to have access because that's going to be using the username and password that would have access to TrueNAS. So if someone gets a hold of your share password for admin, let's say example, then they would be able to use that username and password to log into TrueNAS. If you're a single user and you're the only person using this, fine, maybe, but it's still a better idea to go and create a separate user and a separate password to access your SMB share or the data in this data set. So let's go and do that. So we go to credentials, we go to local groups because we're gonna create a group first. So you'll see here that the admin that we're logged in with has his own group, which is fine. That's standard and default. But what we're gonna do is going to add a new group. So click on add. The group name is going to be share users. We're gonna select the option for Samba authentication and click on save. Now we have a group called share users. And this is going to be useful because we can add individual users to this group to add or remove access to our share later on. So now we can go and we can create a user. So go ahead back to credentials and select local users. Now we have a large list of users here. These are all built in back end users. Here's our admin user. This is what we are using for our access to TrueNest right now. We're using the admin user. If you want to hide all these, select that. And you can see we only got a couple of actual users. Root, don't have access to. Admin's the one that we're using right now. And media, just another standard user for mounted media. So let's create a new user. Select add, and we'll put in the details. This one, we're gonna make a share for Dave. So for Dave, we are not going to need a primary group. And the auxiliary group that we're going to add him to is all the way at the bottom because that's the last group that created and that's share users. For the primary group, we're gonna select no group. Because we don't want Dave to have a user and group really on TrueNest that you can log into within TrueNest or anything like that, these settings will work fine. The shell, because we don't need Dave to log into a shell within TrueNest at all, we can say no login. He's going to be a Samba authentication enabled user because that's the point of his user. So this looks all good and we should be able to click on save. So now that we have Dave created, he doesn't have a login for a shell. He doesn't have a primary group or a home directory. 
He is just a user within TrueNAS with very limited possibilities of doing anything. So now we want to allow Dave or the group that Dave is in to access the data set. So let's go over to data sets, select the shared data set, and we will edit the permissions here. So the first thing I like to do is remove the built-in administrators from this. Like I was saying earlier, we don't want users to use the same credentials to access the share that they do to access the TrueNAS interface. So let's remove that. We'll remove built-in users. We don't need the users that are built into TrueNAS to have access to the share. There may be reasons why you would want this. Um, maybe there's some built-in users that are part of another application that you want to have access to this specific data set. That's fine if you have that, you can re-add this later or not remove it. But for now, for our purpose, we are going to remove it because we don't need any outside users other than the users we want to access this. So we'll remove that. Then what we'll do is we will select the option here to add item. This is going to add a, a line here. So we can add Dave as an individual user. That's fine. That would grant access to the user Dave. The downside to this is, is that you would be managing individual users access every time you added a new person or wanted someone else to have access to the share, you'd have to go in here and add that individual person and you know, grant them access with all these different settings. So in our case, we're not going to do that. We're going to select group. So we can just add a person. And when we add that person, we add them to the group in the users section of TrueNAS and they automatically get ab the ability to access the share. So the group that we're going to add is share users. The sale type is going to be allow, and this is going to be a pretty basic user. We want them to be able to uh, access, read, write, and modify files on the share. Now you could go further. You could give them specific access or another group. Say you wanted a group that could read data, but not write it or not be able to delete data on here. So we could say read data and write data, but not delete. So you would leave that and, and you could, you could get pretty advanced here with this, but for the users here, it's going to be pretty basic. Anyone in the share users group is going to have read, write and modify and execute standard practice uh, permissions here. So we'll just go with modify there and then we can save the access control list. So now we have a data set, which is just a place to hold data. We have a user that can access that data and that space on your TrueNAS. Now we have to send that space out onto our network and share it with other computers. So we'll go to shares and we'll see that Windows SMB shares is already running because we selected the data set that we created to be an SMB enabled share. So it automatically went and turned this on, but you can see here there's no share currently running. So what we'll do is we'll add one to the service. So pretty easy. We are going to expand the path. We're going to select the share folder because that's the data set that we want to share. We can name it. It doesn't need to be the same as that. So this is going to be users share. The purpose, just leave it as default. This should work. Uh, selecting one of these things kind of makes it a little bit more complicated. This is just a very simple tutorial to get started on using TrueNAS to make an ass. You don't need a description and we can enable it or disable it. So for advanced options, there probably isn't anything in here really 
you need unless you're planning on allowing guests to be able to access this which usually isn't the case you usually want to have a username and password associated with accessing this directory or if you have a really old Mac you may want to enable legacy AFP compatibility so not really anything else in here to select click on save and then it's going to ask to restart the service go ahead and do that it'll just restart this Windows SMB service so there we have it now if you want to edit the share on here for permissions wise you can do that through these buttons here the most important one is probably going to be the shield button this is going to be the file system so the data set permissions that we added the user to will recognize this screen here so now we can go ahead and we can try and access this share so let's go ahead and try and access the share so we can just go back to our dashboard and get our IP address which is just here we'll copy that we'll open an explorer and put in our IP address here so we enter the credentials and there's our users share so we should have access to it we can create a folder test folder and let's see if we can drag and drop some files in here over there and it goes we should be able to rename the file and we should be able to execute the file no problem so if we want to add another user to the share we can simply add a user to TrueNAS we can say this is going to be Steve and we basically configure the same thing uh, we use a password we select the auxiliary group to share and we put his primary group as no group and select bash as no login this user if we create it would have access to the share just as the user dave would so we can go to groups and we can see here share users we can select members and we can say see that dave and steve are there if we want to remove access from dave we just remove him from the group and we save and dave should no longer be able to access the user share we may need to restart the service for that so right now he does still have access so once we remove dave we can go to we can go to shares here and turn off service turn on service and that should kick this user out so they no longer have access to do any of this stuff here so now the next time dave comes to access this let's try to open it up dave doesn't have access And that's the basics to getting a true NAS SMB share for your network and getting files on there and users and all that great stuff. I hope this video has helped you out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.